Welcome to the Pro Cheerleading Podcast, hosted by Makiba and Brittany, two former NFL cheerleaders discussing hot topics in the pro cheerleading industry and revealing the truth behind the palms. Today's episode is called Boys Boys Just Just Want to Have have fun. Fun, Male NFL Cheerleaders. Brittany, we are in such an exciting time right now because there are three, count them, one, two, three, Napoleon, Quentin, and Jesse Hernandez are all cheerleaders in the NFL. So Quentin and Napoleon cheer together on the Los Angeles Rams, and Jesse is with the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> New Orleans Saints Sations. Saints Sations. <laughs> but they all appeared at auditions at the beginning of the summer and just went after their dreams to become NFL cheerleaders. They're all classically trained. Absolutely. I mean, they were doing amazing at auditions. Like the video clip, they were doing like quadruple turns. And the kicks were higher and better and stronger. I mean, I could not take my no. eyes off them. For Quentin and Napoleon, it looked like they had them, like, dance together, obviously. Mm. So, I don't know. I mean, know. they're in L.A., so yeah. they're probably getting a lot of press. I mean, I think they were on Extra. Like, they've been making the circuit Good Morning America, the Today Show. Like, I feel like they've been everywhere. Poor Jesse, I feel like he's not getting as much love. Yeah, we couldn't find much information about him. Yeah, but, but I mean, he's holding really it down. cool thing that he's doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Holding it down the only one on the team compared to Jesse and Quentin that get to experience this together. But it, what's not clear is whether they knew each other ahead of time. But it sounds mm-hmm. like they both on their own accord just showed up at auditions. I think Quentin on a Wednesday was at a Laker game and saw the Laker girls performing. He said he's choreographed for um, pro teams and, you know, teaches at a school and and just felt like, why not me? Like, why am I not out there? Like, I can choreograph, I can dance, I can do everything they're doing, and just showed up that Saturday. Like, Wednesday to Saturday, he That's decides crazy. to show up at auditions. Killed it and made it. Crazy. What I don't understand is, you know, how, not like they were allowed in even, but our auditions are not open auditions. But it sounds like the Rams have always had a history of open auditions. Anyone's yeah. allowed to come? Yeah, I mean, ours are, are open, like, for the first round, technically, as long as would they Would they really accept a male? I think they kind of... They would? Th- what would they say to turn them away? I really honestly don't think the rules in terms of, like, the information that's out about open call is specific to gender. But you know what our rules... Well, not the rules, but the announcement about auditions does say is, like... The attire that you show up in, show up in a crop top and booty shorts. These guys did not show up in a crop top and booty shorts. They show shorts. up topless and in booty shorts. <laughs> they could. I didn't want to dance with them. They, um, it looked like they had on like tank top and shorts, but they just kind of probably treated it like any other dance audition. But right. technically, like we have very specific requirements on the attire that we wear for auditions. Well, they want to see your midriff. Remember one year that right. a girl came through with bubbles. And roller skates. Did she really? dance in them? You didn't remember the I roller skates? I missed skate it girl? because we'll get into auditions in another episode. Yeah. But if you're a veteran, you don't have to do the first few rounds. Oh, that's so right. So it was open call. I guess she had bubbles and like painted the floor in bubbles so it was slippery for the rest of the time. That's right. That's a whole nother rant and rave. Yeah. But so back to these guys. You can have craziness yeah. show up at open call. Absolutely. But can you imagine you're checking people in for auditions and I would be men- pumped. Yeah, two men show up. You have no idea how they're going to dance. And they're taking it serious. It's not like a joke or something funny to do. There's no rule that says that they can. I'm sure they just said, you know what? They're professional dancers. They are. They have been in the industry for, I mean, Napoleon danced for 12 years. He was um, worked for Disneyland, I believe. Yeah. Um, So they, you know, trained in jazz, funk, contemporary. I mean, they're legit dancers. So they probably just decided to go for it. Yeah, Quentin has 10 years, and he's danced at quite a a few different dance centers and elite teams. I mean, they're Um, definitely trained and qualified. Yeah, he's a teacher. Yeah, yeah. he spoke about his students. So in talking about, like, what inspired them, it sounded like this was a dream of theirs. Um, And I thought that Quentin had made a great point about, um, you know, inspiring the kids that he works with. Like, why should they limit themselves and go for what you want to do, even if it's wild and crazy and... And it just, I mean, they glowed in these, everybody Google them, okay, because you'll see the videos of their audition performance, and they really were killing it. Like, 
I could see if, you know, if male cheerleaders show up at auditions and they don't have the style or, you know, they can't dance. I mean, you know, maybe it'd be a different story in terms of moving them through the process, but they they claimed it was a lot a lot of hard work. It's not the same as like other dance auditions that they've done. Right. And there was some backlash, it sounded like, as well. I mean, Jesse sounds like he's been catching it a lot. I that's mean, why he's I'm, been kind of silent. You maybe. Think? But I, Jesse was, um, I think, quoted in just saying that it was nothing new to him. So, I mean, there is a stigma about male dancers in general. So he said that it was really, you know, the backlash that he's getting is, is you know, nothing that he hasn't seen before. And it sounds like yeah. he has a good, strong backbone with his family, which is key. I mean, people who support you to do what you love um, – maybe it's all the inspiration that you need and you just block everything else out. Yeah. You made a note here about him having thick skin and being taunted for being a male dancer is nothing new. Yeah. You know, so that's really unfortunate. It's not, it's not something that's well supported. And I, we can all imagine what these guys must be experiencing now that they're actually out there every game. Right. And you know, Jesse's in Louisiana. It's, I don't know if it's quite Bible Belt, but definitely an area that I would think people might be a little bit more conservative. And what they're used to seeing are, you know, women, and that's it. So let's talk about Baltimore, because Baltimore Ravens actually has a male stunt team that's very similar to college football, where you have guys tossing the women in the air and doing all these crazy stunts. And they're considered a part of the team, but they're not dancing. Even their cheerleading females are more stunt than dance. Cheerleaders that you recognize from high school and college, like you said, mm-hmm. it's a lot different than what we know as NFL cheerleaders. For sure. Definitely more so dancers. Yeah. And these guys, so imagine being on the field and whatever routines the the girls do, the men are right there. They're doing kick lines. I saw clips. Really? They're literally I don't know like, if I saw that. Yeah. Jesse, that is so Jesse cool, was, you know, right there in the middle of a long kick line and doing all the moves, all the choreography. That's awesome. Um, They don't have pom-poms, which I think is interesting. Like, why not? Just give them poms, too. And I don't know. So imagine this. Okay, you're a cheerleading director, and you have these guys show up at auditions. They kick butt, and you decide, I'm putting them on my team. Like, are you just – I wonder if they're just figuring it all out real time. Like, they're having to figure out, okay, we have them on a team. What are we going to dress them in? Well, and you think about it, too. Maybe they don't have palms because maybe they're kind of the show-stopping stunners. So mm. maybe they can do, like, a backflip or something mm. that they need their hands. Maybe. And up until late, the the seagulls wore high-heeled boots, mm-hmm. and now they don't. So, so I mean, they're, they're in tennis more shoes, more too. In. Maybe. I don't know. But in a choreography standpoint, there's so much more you can do with men and, like, make the – whole dance more dynamic I think yeah it's kind of cool I hated dancing without my palms though don't you feel it, naked yeah you definitely I feel, feel naked, naked you don't know them. what to do with your hands they just start getting yeah. clawy especially when you're rallying or like trying to pump up the crowd and you need I mean, the palms you, otherwise you might be breaking out some spirit fingers or something yeah but I was seeing like you know from the pictures it looks like they're just kind of like doing a wave or something right but maybe they don't know what it feels like to not have palms yeah Maybe that'll change, Maybe. you know, like you said. Well, because it makes them look more naked next to the rest of the girls in terms of what's in their hands to not have them while they do because that's, I don't know. It stands out it does and stand not out. like they should just be part of the team. Yeah. We were discussing that too is like what about calendar shoots, like bikini calendar yeah, shoots? Yeah, because it's not just for performing that? at games. I'm sure they're seeing that loud and clear, like even for the best dancers when you – you get into the NFL, you realize that it's not just dance. You're having to do appearances. You're having to do modeling and photo shoots. And so, um, I'm I mean, not they're sh- all very handsome, so they oh, can gorgeous. definitely do it. But I wonder how the layouts are going to change. Yeah. Well, what are they going to? I mean, so their uniforms, just to kind of back up too, like they are wearing a different uniform. Nobody panic. They're not in like a, a woman's uniform. They're they're in like a V-neck shirt and some pants. It looks like. Um, but for photo shoots that we do, obviously you have your profile photo shoot and you you know you're in uniform, but for your calendars, they're typically swimsuit calendars. I know some teams are moving away from a swimsuit calendar, but imagine Brittany, you're doing a swimsuit calendar. What would you want to see or what how would you handle the male? I would love it. Pick? Honestly, we've talked about having the players do a calendar. That would be Okay, amazing. that would be 
Like that we would sell like sell. hotcakes. Okay, <laughs> I would push those babies w- with no commission because they would sell. Like I would, even if it wasn't swimsuit, just seeing um, and the, the men from the team like yeah. in regular clothes without right. their helmets on, oh, so people can see how well dressed they are. Um, Lifestyle shots, kind yeah. of thing. I, I kind of want to see him in the gym, but that's well, just me. Yeah, okay. I don't blame Anyways. you. Anyways, <laughs> neither here nor there. <laughs> but for like the this cheerleader calendar, where it's usually a parade of you know swimsuit shots, or you know they go on location and they shoot. I don't. I believe the Rams cheerleaders calendar is typically swimsuit, but um, I wonder if they would put them in swim attire. We'll have to buy one and go through it. Yes, I'm we curious will. how they're going to navigate that. For sure, because you, you, I mean, if you're going to make it equal across the board, then you really can't try to create too different of an experience for the men. And I mean, otherwise it would seem like they're being unfairly left out or like they could be in some board shorts. Yeah. No, I would. But how would you sell that? See, now we're like contradicting ourselves it's, it's from new. prior episodes. I mean, it would be very, you know? very new to. What would you do if you were If director? I were the director, yes. I would say we're not doing a swimsuit calendar. Okay, agreed. I think we would move away from that and do a, you know, shots uniform. in the uniform. And yeah. then that, then you're removing that dynamic um, with male cheerleaders of having to figure out what you're going to, to dress them in and how they're going to be posed and everything else. So definitely something, you know. It could be very Abercrombie and Fitch, you know, yeah. just kind of girls and guys. Just re- interacting. Yeah, interacting. Because, I mean, they're just, they're people. I mean, and they're, like you said, right. they're gorgeous. I think they're attractive. I mean, they have their personalities, um, I think, just sell on a, their own. Like, they have such, like, vibrant faces and facial expressions. Like, when I watched them dance, it just made me smile. So I could see them just just modeling and being natural. And, I mean, they're used to this. I'm sure as professional dancers, you have headshots. You take, you do photo shoots and stuff. So Yeah, it's in L.A. They're not yeah. probably... Yeah, they're used to used it. to all of this stuff. But let's talk about like the game day experience. So you know, we all change and get ready for games in the locker room, and I'm wondering for you know Jesse, who's the only one on this team, if he's having to be, you know, in a separate locker room from the rest of the girls. I mean, if you could imagine like the bonding and what you do in the locker room and how you prepare, and then where you know where's Jesse at. Right, and then Quentin and Napoleon are just supposed to hang out alone? Yeah, it looks like they had, like, a a dressing room. I'm kind of stalking them on social media. <laughs> I follow them on Instagram, but it looked like they had a smaller area for, like, makeup and stuff. And apparently Napoleon is, like, a makeup blogger and stuff. So he's, oh, wow. he showed, like, his makeup station was just crazy filled with a bunch of stuff. And I think Quentin, like, had, like, barely anything but at least they have each other right I kind of wish that Jesse had someone to go through this experience with them and it sounds like their teammates have been majorly supportive which is oh that's good which is good that is really good but you know when you think about you know changing at halftime and it looks like they only have one uniform that would suck like if you're changing oh, you know at, at the half and then you have all these different Maybe a change looks. of shirt just no. I don't know if they're just like sweaty yeah oh yeah there's Wouldn't you want to uh, yes. change your shirt at least? And it has to coordinate with the girls. I'm I, this direct. These directors probably had to figure out a lot on the spot. You know, like yeah. make a saint, you know, logo V neck in like a material that seems like it's good enough for. Like I'm sure yeah. they haven't thought of this at all. Right. Like how prepared would you be as a director? Now I'm sure all the rest of the directors will have to think through. What if we get males at our auditions next year? This might really take change on. Change the game. Yes. But I think I have to applaud them. Just that's so cool that they opened the organization for guys Everybody to come through. Come. I think it's going to make it better for the girls. And now guys are going to feel welcome mm-hmm. to dance with us too. Yeah. So it's amazing. I think it's really, really cool. And I was inspired by um, Quentin's response uh, to a question about, like, what do you do about all the haters or people who – adamantly feel that you guys should not be out there dancing and his response was more or less just saying that I don't even think about them like I'm having the time of my life and as long as I have the support of my family and my friends and my teammates and the organization like that's all that matters to me and I'm trying to think like how do they how can they block all of that out I mean I hope they're not getting booed at games I but can you imagine like with doing um, promotional appearances out in the community and sometimes you come across fans that give you their 
two, two cents. cents. And you're like, did I ask? Yeah. Like, why don't you girls wear clothes? And why don't... I mean, I could hear... I, I, I'd hate to think about it, but the unfortunate scenario where these guys are sent out into the community to do an appearance and they're approached by a fan who is rude to them or says really inappropriate things about the fact that they're out there dancing. You just have to professionally defend yourself, I think. For sure. You're there to represent the organization, but these guys are, like you said, changing the game and opening doors for so many other people. But, yeah, I mean... They should definitely not just deal with blatant disrespectful No, of course comments. not. I mean, without, you know... I mean, you can only do so much when you're acting in a professional capacity, but There's I'm hoping... There's always a few people that think it's okay to Oh, make for sure. Fair. I would just say for the guys that are out there and you're going to be out in the community meeting fans and maybe not everyone and being supportive of what you're doing is just remember why you try it out in the beginning, you know, and live your dream, enjoy the experience, and hopefully just don't let anything taint it, right? I mean, because... Your rookie year is hard enough just figuring out what's going on anyway. But, That's true. And it, not everybody's going to like you. People might make really crappy comments of, <laughs> about your pictures. And yeah, trolling, trolling on social media. Yeah. That definitely happens. But Quentin has quite a few people looking up to him because he has a student. So right. you should definitely keep it pushing. And Think about who inspires you. Yeah. and um, Audition next year. Keep coming back. For real. So what, what do you think would happen if, you know, next year that, like, men are popping up all throughout the NFL. the NFL and the squad just slowly changes into a straight up co-ed squad. Could you see that? I totally can. Yeah. Do you think they should mix the like squads? Usually there's like four squads per team. So the yeah. four corners are covered. Right. Do you think that they would have it like an all boy squad or and a mix co-ed? I don't know. Well, think about like, let's think about NBA, right? This is the pro cheerleading podcast. We talk about things other than football, but I think there are some NBA teams that straight up are co-ed that I think I just saw um, a post for the, the Blazers um, cheer really? or dance team. They they were recruiting Portland, Oregon. Yeah, they were recruiting um, male dancers. What? Yes, that's cool. So maybe you know maybe we're seeing a trend and where they're going to think about choreography in a different way. But they they said that they wanted strong hip hop male dancers. And when you think about NBA, I mean that's pretty much what they're doing anyway. But I think there are different teams that have male dancers that perform, and. I think you can have, I mean, I think it challenges the choreography. I mean, for us as women, you know, hair whips and there's a certain style for NFL cheerleading. And obviously the guys can do the kicks and a guy can whip his head around even with no hair on it. That's not the point. But I think you can get a little bit more creative with the choreography if you have men on as part of your squad. Absolutely. It makes it exciting. And I think it makes it exciting for the fans, too. Because they don't know what they're going to get. Right. Let's change it up a little bit. It doesn't always have to be... And if the NFL is not completely about, you know, objectifying women, I mean, what better way to really normalize the content of what we're doing out there if you have male dancers and you're trying to put less emphasis on what we're wearing? Side note, did you know that there are, um, it was the Redskins, there's an article that came out that basically said in response to an article that was written in May about a very... Um, disgusting incident that happened at one of their photo shoots in Costa Rica where the cheerleaders, you know, they're doing their photo shoot for the swimsuit calendar and they were um, they were essentially being watched by season ticket holders that they had flown down. Right, they were invited to to basically watch, to the, watch yeah. the photo shoot and yes. each team has varying degrees of what do you say? Risk I mean, yeah. I mean, they have, I mean, their, their shots were women holding their chest and with body paint and different things so this was a very uncomfortable shoot for the girls they spoke to the media the long and the short of it is just that as a result of that the Redskins in cleaning up shop decided to go through all 22 of the Redskins cheerleading uniforms and pick the six most covered up conservative ones and that's what they that's all they can wear all year but I'm just thinking the NFL teams are starting to try to address this negative image they have of how they treat the women and I think you know what a, not necessarily a distraction, but what a way to change the dialogue if you're now having male cheerleaders and everybody's, you know, they're changing uniforms around what people are wearing and exposing. And I think it 
almost takes the emphasis off of like it's all about showing these half naked women dancing around all the time to have That's male true. cheerleaders. I mean, these guys kind of prove it that there's so many skilled men and women mm-hmm. who are amazing dancers, and maybe the uniform is a little bit of a distraction. I mean, I loved our uniform and I felt sexy in it. Yeah. But I couldn't imagine maybe feeling comfortable going full out in my dances if I felt like something was going to fall off. Worst nightmare or something. Yeah, it is a worst nightmare. We've had girls with oh, whose we have. uniforms have completely popped open right on the field. We had to have like a safety belt, buckle, tie, clip, clip, safety pin. We were really trying to make sure that yeah. didn't happen. I mean, I mean, with cell phone cameras these days and it stuff, would be it's all over the place. One hot second. But let's everywhere. think for a second. I mean, the guys seem to be just so thrilled with the opportunity. But what if, you know, like, and maybe they just will take whatever, right? Because it's the first time. But what if there are men that come out and they're like, no, I want to have like a uniform that I feel sexy in. Take this V-neck and weird track pants off of me. And like, why can't I wear what I would consider to be sexy not that they would be that bold but what if they kind of felt like this was just this isn't even my true style like when I maybe they envision as a male cheerleader that they were going to be wearing something else Hmm. I mean we have men that can dance in heels so give them a pair of boots let's give the shout out to Giannis Marshall who if you do not know you better ask somebody but he can dance up and down sideways all over anybody in heels I mean and he doesn't wear anything like really just no, he wears jean shorts and, like, yeah. a baggy T-shirt. But, I mean, you could tell that I, – I'm trying to imagine. Maybe they didn't care what they were wearing. They just wanted to be able to dance. Maybe. Maybe. But I could see this really turning into – What if we had a horrendous uniform? Would you still audition and try out and mm. maybe try to change it from within? It's like a goes to your <laughs> knees, you know, old school Greek style I think they're moving that direction, though. I know. Honestly, like to read that article, and I mean, the Redskins cheerleaders to me were like the sexiest things on earth. There's they are. A, there's a conference, you guys, in Atlanta that brings together all the pro cheerleaders and NBA, NFL, NHL, semi pro teams, and they all convene in Atlanta for one weekend. You better look it up if you want to see the most beautiful women ever just flooded into a city. I mean, I'm sure Atlanta already had beautiful people, but still, you're getting an influx of cheerleaders that come in, they learn choreography over like three days, I think it is. Um, we what was did my it point? One year. We did it one oh, year. It was, it was kind of brutal. Yeah, it was rough. Um, but you get to see all the different styles of the different girls in the NFL and the Redskins cheerleaders. I couldn't keep my eyes off them. They're just, I mean, they're, I don't even know how they stay in their uniforms, but they're revealing, they're just super, super sexy. I I think they totally toe the line, but to think about for their perspective, you know, if this was always your style and your, you know, your MO and now you're like wearing turtlenecks and freaking (laughs) like you're covered from head to toe. I just... I think there's almost like a line that you don't want it to cross where it's, there's nothing wrong with being sexy. There's nothing wrong with showing skin. There's nothing wrong with, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Should that be the only trick in your basket? And, you know, no. Um, but I think if they're starting to move that direction just because of all the heat they're getting, you're going to be dancing in moomoos. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. I mean, there are times, though, get us wrong. Like when it's cold outside, you know, we're not in a closed stadium. The more clothes, the merrier. Um, you definitely want to bundle up versus, you know, be half naked out there. But, okay, so when the holidays hit, football is, you know, dying down, getting ready for the Super Bowl. Yeah. We have, a lot of teams have, um, like, Christmas costumes, right? Yeah. Ours is fully covered. I still felt cute in that. It was cute. Did you, you didn't feel I, sexy Santa in it? I did feel Santa babyish, like, you know. I, I don't think you have to have the tightest thing on or, like, skin showing to feel sexy. Um, sometimes it's just feeling beautiful. Sometimes it's feeling glamorous. Sometimes it's just... Wearing some- a vest. <laughs> <laughs> With fake fur around the neck. They were feathers. <laughs> <laughs> like a Seahawk. Um, I felt sexy when I was warm, okay? I'm just going to leave it at that. I, I did not feel sexy when I felt constricted in my dancing. Like, if I felt like my weird vest bird thing was kind of getting in the way when I'm like trying to look over my shoulder and serve some business that that frustrated me mine was the the rain hat yes if we had to wear the rain hat I just was like 
to the wind. I'm not good. You're not going to get the best show, people. <laughs> no, because it's falling on top of your eyes and stuff. You can't even see. And... So we would wear that only really when it was raining. But if you we did are in not, Seattle. but if you didn't wear the rain hat, though, your eyelashes are coming off and you're looking a hot mess because the rain is just like totally coming. I see That's the point very of flash them. dance, you know, like wet hair flying I do through like the that. air. I don't mind that. I did not like the hat. I couldn't no. see, and it was just rain jacket. Cool, that's like necessary, but the hat wasn't wasn't no. a good look. But yeah, you got to think about all that with these these male yeah, they need accessories. You know? Like they can't just what are have they going to be doing? Sorry, they can't just have like one outfit. I hope no. they realize that and fix. We'll have because to follow them. And see. I really am curious because they need to switch things up. They need to have another look when the girls change into another look, and hopefully. I mean, if the guys are going to have, like, a V-neck and, like, pants, then the girls should have, like, a cute little hip hoppy two-piece oh, number, cute. right? Because yeah. it doesn't always have to be tight McCrite. Like, they can just have, like... <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> Sorry, I just kind of... I say made it, it all. Up. Made it up. But I do say it a lot. But um, there are options, right, so that they blend. Because you want to have a cohesive team, right? So I would think that you would just kind of take it from... You know, if we do have men that are dressed in certain attire, like, what would really complement them? Not that the whole world should revolve around them, but just, like, what would be a but good look for the team. But they need to be included. Team. If they're part of the team now, then, yeah. they need to be included. And that one of the main things of being a cheerleader is your uniform. Exactly. Like, it's a coveted uniform. So they need to have something just as special. Yeah. And I kind of – I'm sorry, Jesse, but I didn't like what the Saints put together for him. It was very just, like – you could buy it at their pro shop. Yeah, I didn't feel like it was because you're right. That your uniform is your prized possession. You put it on and you feel like I'm official, like you know. And you don't. No one else just, has that. Yeah, and just I don't know. I thought they could have done a little, but hey, they probably didn't have very much time to get it together. Right. But I could just if this grows into a trend of more men is showing up at auditions. I just think it's going to change the game for sure. They already are changing the game. Absolutely. We'll have to keep you posted on how these guys enjoy their season, follow them on social media, give you some updates. But I really, truly hope they are having the best time. They deserve that, you know. I mean, they're working hard. I'm, they'll see how much work it takes to be a pro cheerleader because it's a little different than just, you know, dance performances, I would imagine. I mean, I don't, they've done a lot, but I think yeah. cheering games, being out in all kinds of weather and all the appearances, they'll see that it's a lot to it. But best of luck to the guys. Absolutely. Like, Congratulations. That's super cool. It's awesome. It's awesome. Okay. So let's change it into locker talk. Ooh, what are we talking about today? <laughs> let's talk about fan mail. The good, the bad, the weird, <laughs> the weird, the smelly, <laughs> the weird questions. Like, what was the weirdest item you received in the mail? Because we get fan mail. I mean, that's pretty cool. I used to yeah. get really excited. I'd get letters. I'd get photos of myself to yes. sign. I mean, those were I'm so sent cute. Sent to prison? No, I'm yeah, kidding. probably. I don't know. I mean, did you have a prison? I letter? never really okay. tracked it. Of Some where of it was them, going. Yeah. Did you ever send the mail back to them, signed? Uh, you know, I always had a good intention to because I thought that was so cool that they yeah. did that. Um, but I don't think I actually did. Because the few that I – I kind of have a story, but – Tell. Tell. Share. Okay, so there was this really nice gentleman that would always send me cassette tapes. What? <laughs> you didn't know this? No, you did not tell me okay, this. Okay, for the last few years, it'd be like, Brittany, you got a package. Oh, cool. And it would be cassette tapes. So I literally have like 30 cassette tapes, but Are I don't have a tape player. Like, who has a tape player anymore? Oh, my gosh. We need to find one. <laughs> I need played find... one. It did was you... pretty good. What it wasn't was like he heavy singing? breathing or anything. No, I think he literally, <laughs> he literally like recorded his favorite songs. For and you. It, for me. And he would always leave a note and say, like, this is my favorite. That's it kind of scared me because he would put two pieces of styrofoam and then, like, duct tape <laughs> to keep them safe, I think, in transit. Where? Okay, what state did he send these from? Where is he? Do you remember? I think New York. Really? I think. Dang, B. But my retiring season, mm -hmm. I was like, this guy's been sending me tapes for a good three years now. Like every Dude, few months, I get tapes. I have a collection. Tapes, I cannot. And so oh I was God. like, I'm going to send him a calendar. I'm going to sign it and say, thank you so much for the fan mail. Okay. This is my last season. I appreciate your support. That's so sweet. Did you yeah, do it? I totally did. I went to UPS. Oh my gosh. And I sent it out. And UPS released my phone number to him. You. What? I am dead serious. 
So then I kept getting phone calls from him and vo- voicemails. You've got to be kidding me. It was pretty me. bad. He, he sounded really sweet, but it was like, how did they end up doing that? I don't that? know. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I did not give well, him my kn- phone number. I think it was like on the slip. On the slip. So it was kind of scary. Oh, my God. But I'm like, oh, my God. Clutching my pearls. But, okay, can we just get back to these 30-some-odd cassette tapes? We are going to... We're going to um, play one Give of your songs. Give a shout out. I'll give his sh- name. Oh, my gosh. I don't think I have anything that will yeah, ever, you ever like match chocolate that. once. I did. But it was kind of, <laughs> <laughs> it was for my birthday. And you're like, does anybody want chocolate? Oh I was like, gosh. what? You got chocolate? It was pretty That's amazing. Um, it was pretty funny. We do have some pretty awesome season ticket holders. And maybe they just develop their favorites after a while. And um, You were everybody's favorite, though. No, Come on. No. No. You are our one true ginger, man. Like, everybody loves you. Um, and they get pissed, like, where's the gin- Where's the redhead? Right. Like, when they're looking at the there team photo. There's no redheads on the yeah, team this year. Yeah, sometimes your hair does not right. look red enough. Right. Yeah, because people have had to point it out. Like, we do have a redhead yeah. in the top left corner. But um, I don't have a crazy story like that. Most what? of the time they send, like, pictures, like you said, or I can't think of anything weird. Well, okay, what about good mail? Because I know sometimes after you would do a promo with, mm-hmm. like, a partnering sponsor, they would always send, like, a cute little card or a photo at yeah. that promo. That was always nice. I always love seeing those. I mean, you know, I don't know about you, but I have, like, boxes and boxes of keepsakes and things that I swear I'm going to, like, scrapbook one day, and Lord knows it's probably not going to happen. But <laughs> I save everything and just the, the nice mail that you get. I mean – my favorite was doing um, our junior program where we're dancing with the young girls and sometimes I, you know, get some feedback from the moms and it's just really touching and you know that you'll be looking back on that and just reflecting on some pretty amazing experiences. But and even I don't just have, cards we've written. Do you still each have other. these cassette tapes? I can't I get do. over it. Okay. We're gonna I we're think gonna... it's actually still duct tape together. <laughs> oh, so you didn't even open some of them? No, because I mean you how didn't am have I gonna listen to oh them? Oh my gosh. But one day, I, some one of my coworkers had a cassette player, and so we listened to it. And really... I had to explain that there's an A side and a B side, and like flip <laughs> it over. It was so funny. Like people don't and know about that anymore. He filled the whole tape. He filled the whole tape. That's love, man. I know. He was, That's like he old was... school stuff. Hey, like recording. No. You like I have sitting his number. A... Maybe I should call him. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people hope they'll find their husband through. Doing, being a pro cheerleader, so right. you, you never know. Well, that was a good behind locker talk. Yeah, I don't. I can't believe I didn't know this about you. I think that you have something that you just can't remember right now. Nothing that juicy, though. Dang. Hmm. Well, should we talk about that one time? What no. one time? <laughs> what one time, Brittany? Um, when we would have weekend workshop. Which took a whole weekend mm-hmm. in like June or whatever, and yes. we basically what we could cut this. No, but um, <laughs> you were on the team. Yeah, when we were heading out, and it was past I think like where they get their physicals. The players get their physicals. Uh-huh. It was down that hallway. We're not supposed to be down that hallway, but we needed to go outside to practice in the grass. Yes, and so our director was like, I can't remember. I think we were just heading out there. And she peeked in and saw that we need to just cut all this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what are you going to say? <laughs> what are you going to say, Brittany? <laughs> okay. We had to press pause so... for a minute to make sure this was a story that was <laughs> <laughs> Because the players basically have full access to the practice facility and we you know, we don't. We can't yeah. just run around in the gym or whatever. Right. We have designated areas where you can be and exactly. hallways that we can't be. Right. So we were heading outside to practice in the grass. And I think, if you know, half the group was kind of ahead. And our director peeked into, like, the physical room where basically they were going to get physicals, weigh-ins, all that stuff. And she started to hurry us along because I, I'm pretty sure there was – a naked player in there so I tried to look but I didn't see anything you didn't see anything no no so it's not that juicy of a story oh honestly. man I mean it would be if we did catch a glimpse yeah. but we did have to walk past that room where they often got massages that's right and it would be awkward because it's so tempting to just peek over <laughs> oh I looked in I was like <laughs> rubbernecking looking in trying to see who it was and they'd um, be like shh be quiet I know because like, we're coming in chatty patty 30 and, women like <laughs> yeah and, and they're up there quietness. getting massages and rub down so that's some good locker room talk heck yeah seriously well we appreciate you tuning in to this episode 
we would love to hear your comments and questions <laughs> and just um, your thoughts about whether we should have male cheerleaders in the NFL. Like, what do you think? Is it any? Is there any real difference? Are you not entertained by wonderful dancers regardless of their gender? Right. Boys just want to have fun, too. Exactly. So follow us on Instagram at Pro Cheerleading Podcast. Also on Twitter at Pro Cheer Podcast. We also have a Facebook page and a YouTube page, so come check us out. Until next time, we're signing off from the Pro Cheerleading Podcast. We gave you a lot of truth behind the palms today, Brittany, didn't we? Yes, we did, Makiba. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Until next time. Thanks for listening to the Pro Cheerleading Podcast. Please subscribe, leave a comment, or review. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all at Pro Cheerleading Podcast. And also on Twitter at Pro Cheer Podcast. This is Brittany. And Makiba. Until next time. Keep your eyes on the sidelines.